get it. Mike Semper VV here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in, iHeart, American Forces Radio, sportsbyline.com, over-the-air affiliates like KMAV, 99 KMSR, and the Mightier 1090. Maybe you're listening via podcast or a replay on Sirius XM, or maybe you're video streaming on Twitch or YouTube, however you're joining me today. I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully, wherever you are, it's sunny outside, and if not, hopefully it's sunny inside your mind. It is a cold, raw winter day here on my portion of Delmarva, but... There is good news, as Punxsutawney Phil, America's groundhog authority on meteorological matters, saw his shadow, or did not see his shadow this morning, which means spring is on the way. I'm ready for that. I'm also, I was ready to bring on Filthy Tom Lawler because it's a Filthy Friday. If you recall correctly, he ghosted me last week, said he was going to do something, ended up in Bossier City, Louisiana, at the Ring of Honor tapings, teaming up with his new friend Fred Rosser, facing off against the ROH World Tag Team Champions of the Kingdom, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett. Did not work out too well for old Filthy Tom. Good news for him, though. He wasn't the one that took the fall. Not sure how this is going to affect his relationship with the West Coast Wrecking Crew who is not very bullish on this relationship that he has started up here with Phil, the, uh, with Fred there, the, the filthy Fred team. But at some point, he should be making his way to the show, and we'll talk to him. I'm and... here, Mike. Oh, you are here. I've been here Where the whole time. Well, where I don't know. That's video? not. I'm not in charge of that. I've Jeez. been here listening, listening to your words the entire time. So you didn't given... hear me right before when I said, filthy, are you there? No, I wasn't paying attention. This is the perfect way to start off a Filthy Friday. And guess what, Tom? We're both going to pay. You know why? Because Matthew Justice, your opponent, tomorrow night is going to be joining me. And us on Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi here with you. You know, we do this show right here for an hour at a time every single day. But if you want us 24-7, you can try to find us on Twitter slash X if we have not blocked or muted you. I'm at Semper Vivi. Filthy is at Filthy Tom Lawler. The website is at W-O-N-F-4-W. And the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. I will skip over my plug for the wrestling news. You know where to find that, thewrestlingnews.com. And at Wrestling News AV on Facebook and Twitter. I am doing that because I wanted to bring on... Filthy, before we had to get to all of the terrible nonsense taking place in the world of Vince McMahon and WWE, and since we ended the show yesterday, there has been a lot more that has come out, Filthy, but I wanted to bring you on to to talk to you about where you were last week when you dusted me, and I, I forget where you said you were going to go, but you ended up in Bossier City, Louisiana, hanging out with your new friend, Fred. Yes, Mike, that is correct. Last weekend, I had to catch a flight. I apologize that I could not be here for our regularly scheduled programming. Mm. However, I did go to Louisiana. The Jericho Cruise, I believe, left AEW a little shorthanded. Your arch nemesis, Chris Jericho. Mm. So... The stars of New Japan Pro Wrestling were extended a leaf by Tony Khan, and some of us were given a spot on the show to face off against some of ROH and AEW's best, and myself and Fred Rosser, both being former strong champions, both being champions of life, inspirations, for generations coming after us we were given a uh, tag team opportunity against the kingdom the undisputed kingdom a main event level tag team champion duo and unfortunately it was our first match together and we came up short i didn't come up short really well i was 
Spicoli bombed on the ramp, that wouldn't have been enough to put me down. But a series of tag team maneuvers put down poor Fred Rosser, and uh, well, we're 0-1. You know, your experience here with tag teams is not going very well. You lost this match with Fred. You're, you're dealing with your own tag team, the World Class, the West Coast, sorry, the World Class Wrecking Crew. That would be old. The West Coast Wrecking Crew, you know, is not happy with you right now. You obviously had the worst partner of all time in Brian Alvarez, and you and Josh Bishop, well, you lost to Manders and Matthew Justice, Tom. I mean, maybe this tag team thing just isn't for you. Well, it's funny that you mention Matt Justice, who will be joining us later in the show, because I will face off against him this weekend at MLW Super Fight on the taped portion of the card, and I'm going to beat him down, and then I'm going to get another shot at those tag belts, and then you're going to see him. It, it, I might beat him, him and Manders by myself for those oh. belts if I have to. You're going to see him around my waist one way or another. I can almost guarantee today, if there was ever going to be an FCC violation, it is going to happen in the last segment of this show when Filthy Tom Lawler talks to his opponent for MLW at the 2300 Arena tomorrow, Matthew Justice. Yeah, that is actually going to happen. But Filthy, I need to I need to pull it back here a little bit because, unfortunately, the biggest news in professional wrestling is revolving around Vince McMahon and is revolving around the Janelle Grant lawsuit uh, against McMahon, WWE, and John Laurinaitis. And as we were going off the air yesterday, literally as we were going off the air in the last short segment of the show, uh, Laurinaitis, the disgraced former head of WWE talent relations, issued a statement to the media company Vice through his attorney, Edward Brennan, in which Brennan supported some of Grant's claims while also disputing Laurinaitis' Laura, Laura role in them, uh, stated Brennan, quote, Mr. Laurinaitis denies the allegations in the misguided complaint and will be vigorously defending these charges in court, not the media. Like the plaintiff, Mr. Laurinaitis is a victim in this case, not a predator. The truth will come out, end quote. So, later yesterday evening, PW Insider reported that Brock Lesnar was being pulled from video games created by 2K due to being implicated in the lawsuit. And Lesnar's content was pulled from the digital collectible game WWE Supercard and that he would be, quote, downplayed as much as possible going forward by 2K and potentially other licensees, end quote. The WWE 2K24 console game, also published by 2K, is scheduled to come out on March 8th. Lesnar is still expected to be in that game as it's likely too late to remove him. He was also reportedly scheduled to return during last Saturday's Royal Rumble show, but was pulled from the event and replaced by Braun Breaker. That leads us into today's news. Vince McMahon is under federal investigation over the sexual assault allegations. In July of 2023, a filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission by WWE revealed a federal search warrant had been executed on McMahon by the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, who also served McMahon with a federal jan grand jury subpoena. At the time, it was assumed the government was looking into the settlements and NDAs that McMahon had signed with four women. Those assumptions turned out to be on the money because this morning the Wall Street Journal reported that federal agents were looking for McMahon's cell phone as well as for any documents related to any allegation of rape, sex trafficking, sexual assault, commercial sex transaction, harassment or discrimination against current or former WWE employees. The journal also noted other women who were named in the grand jury subpoena, including a WWE contractor whom McMahon allegedly sent unsolicited nude photos to and sexually harassed, a former WWE wrestler who said McMahon coerced her into giving him oral sex, 
former WWE referee Rita Chatterton, who publicly accused McMahon of raping her, a spa manager who said McMahon assaulted her as, at a Southern California resort, and a former WWE employee who alleged the head of talent relations at the company at the time, John Laurinaitis, demoted her after she broke off an affair with him. Then, right before we got on the air, a report was put up on the front page of the website by Josh Nason, talking about the fact that the NDAs that several women signed with McMahon were reportedly created in secret and entered into without WWE's knowledge, with McMahon even going as far as to sign them on the company's behalf. The report comes from a per person familiar with the situation via Vice's Tim Marshman, who added that detail is the reason that WWE had to issue revised earnings statements following the summer of 2022 scandal that erupted when McMahon's hush money payments to women he allegedly had sexual affairs with became public. In talking with several legal experts, Marshman reported that the terms in the aforementioned NDAs are likely unenforceable. In Janelle Grant's case, the fact that McMahon paid $1 million of the $3 million agreed to likely makes any deal null and void. Grant went public last week in a detailed lawsuit against McMahon, Laurinaitis, and WWE, accusing McMahon of sex trafficking and sexual abuse. From the story, it reads, quote, an NDA cannot be used as a shield to prevent a victim from bringing criminal charges or speaking to investigators. If these women or others desire to speak out in public or bring several suits, though, it is not clear that an agreement like this one Grant signed would prevent that, end quote. So a day after his uh, lawyer said his client was a victim like Grant under McMahon's control, Laurinaitis' lawyer, Edward Brennan, also told Vice they will, quote, go where the evidence leads, end quote, when it comes to whether other company executives were aware and involved with what was going on. We will get into the rest of this story, as well as Tom's reaction to it and everything else taking place in the world of professional wrestling when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Semper, BB, Filthy Tom Lawler, we are with you. Wrestling Observer Live, continuing on with the story from the previous segment about this whole deal about Vince McMahon uh, signing these secret NDAs on the company's behalf without their knowledge. He apparently, uh, as it, Vice's reporting, got counsel from his longtime lawyer, Jerry McDivitt, uh, quote, according to a source familiar with the matter, though, the contract was in fact executed with McMahon secretly signing on both his behalf and that of WWE after seeking counsel from his longtime attorney, Jerry McDivitt, a seeming conflict of interest Goldberg called bizarre. Goldberg is Kerry Goldberg, who represented victims of Harvey Weinstein and was interviewed for the article. She noted that the copy Grant filed in the lawsuit was not signed by McMahon in either his personal capacity or role as then chair of WWE, as normally all parties would receive an executed copy of the contract. So, as I said, there has been a lot if uh, since the last time that we signed off here. Uh, Tom, I don't know if you want to comment on any of this stuff uh, that has taken place either in the last 24 hours or in the past week here but uh you know the floor is yours if you so choose what a segue thank you what a thing to have to talk about i wish we weren't talking about i know this I, well, I was gonna i'm asking at you all because i Every don't know day. where jaw rule is we were gonna ask jaw but we'll figure we'll ask you but this is a perfect time. Where's Greg the Hammer Valentine at? Right? I'd Fight, like to fighting with Brutus question. Beefcake's wife, I believe, still. <laughs> oh, Brutus Beefcake finds himself in the news as well. He did. After he that did. Shawn Michaels interview. But, uh, I mean, this is deplorable actions on behalf of Vince McMahon, the other people who are involved, John Laurinaitis. Um <laughs> What an interesting maneuver by him to bite the hand that fed him for so long. A like man who, <laughs> right? You would hear 
story after story, and most of them were not good about no. John Laurinaitis. And now, to I don't even want to say to his credit, but he is given the unenviable task of firing people left and right. So what good could you say about that job? But for him to just turn immediately on Vince is not the twist that I saw coming in this story. Um, I think the biggest, obviously the biggest mistake that Vince made besides the nefarious activities and sexual assault is the lesson that you don't mess with people's money. And that is essentially what's getting Vince in trouble. He didn't pay off Janelle Grant like he was supposed to. And he took company money of a publicly traded company where there's plenty of investors who have already filed suits against him who would love for him to have to go down in flames because of the sale of the company, because of the way that he left and then forced himself back into the board of directors. There's plenty of people who invested in this company who would love to see him go down. And ultimately, I mean, really, that's what's going to be his downfall, right? Is the SEC looking into these payments that were done behind people's backs? Jerry McDivitt advised him on this? Apparently, what, what, well, what Vice is saying, where's Jerry McDivitt now? He was trying he got to retire, out. right? Yeah. He got out of Dodge, didn't he? He saw the writing on the wall, perhaps. When you look at the timeline of events that has gone you know, down. Honestly, Tom, maybe that was his gift after all these years of protecting this guy on so many nefarious things that he has been accused of doing, that maybe that was his accidental you know <laughs> gift to the to the you know any victims of his past were to go ahead and advise him on this knowing that it was going to bite him in the butt i don't know if that was the case i doubt it probably was but i guess if if you know there's a i guess maybe there's something to be said for that i don't know there's four other ndas apparently that are known of right so how many yes. are there you know that aren't known of how many were using company money, how many were off the books with personal money. Well, apparently all were, were, were because he was paying back the money and he's paid back what seventeen million dollars because it was those the NDAs and then it was a donation to I believe it was to the Trump campaign fund that ended up you know he had to pay all of that back. Yeah, and Mike, I I think you should bring up a point that you brought up right before we were about to get on the air there and that is that Vince has been tied up in legal situations dating back to what the 1980s the yeah, 90s absolutely right there's plenty of people not only investors like I mentioned before who are mad about him messing with their money but people that just want to see this guy go down you're right, and I'm sure there's people probably listening right now who are thinking you might sound callous when it comes to talking about the money, but let's be honest here. It's what a lot of this, you know, what a lot what moves a lot of people into moral positions all of a sudden, so, you know, tend to be when their money gets messed with, and then all of a sudden they want to make a stand on things. That's why I rolled my eyes so heavy on the Netflix thing yesterday. But, you know, as I was saying before what Tom is talking about, they have bragged everybody that wanted to brag about that steroid trial and Vince beating the government. My dad, he had his, remember that crap with Stephanie? My dad had his own 9-11 when the government went after him. Well, you know what? The government isn't on. one to forget. And the Come Southern on. District of New York is not one to forget. And them holding to the heat to him on this, you know, it's obviously, you know, again, serious stuff. Yeah, I mean, the news cycle in professional wrestling is nonstop. Like, by the time this show is finished, something else is going to have, have to have happened. Tonight, there's a wrestling show, the number yeah. one yeah. most watched show on the planet, SmackDown, oh, yeah. which we probably won't even talk about. 
Well, I mean, let's, you know, we, we should get, we'll get into it right now because coming up in the next segment, obviously oh. Justice is going to be coming on to, to talk about the match you guys are going to have and the MLW show coming up tomorrow. But yeah, SmackDown live tonight on Fox from the Legacy Arena, in Birmingham, Alabama. I mean, how do you, tra- again, with what we're transitioning from news-wise about wrestling that, involves wrestling people now to the actual oh yeah fun times the sports entertainment portion of the proceedings you know there's no good way to do it here but well, on the ahead. other on the flip side mike i will say and maybe it doesn't happen to this level but every business in the world is dirty uh, on some level Let's let's be honest. Right? When it gets every, big enough, yeah. Every every business, every Corporate. place I've ever worked, you know what I mean. Somewhere along the chain, there's there's bad stuff happening. Unfortunately, that's the case with all of humanity, right? So sometimes we need an escape. Sometimes Friday nights, SmackDown is that escape. So don't feel bad. Do you ever have a pina colada with it? Yeah, every once in a while I do. Maybe I I have a little hot wing flavored truly as well. Oh, God. Well, look, I I would have assumed that Roman Reigns was going to be on this show anyway. If I'm WWE right now from the, forget about the public relations part, but just trying to get people to concentrate on the wrestling part of the things like creatively, I'm putting Roman Reigns on everything. I'm putting Roman Reigns on Raw. I might put him on NXT. I'm putting him on Level Up. I'm putting him everywhere. He was announced for the show tonight. Makes sense, though, because the Men's Royal Rumble winner, Cody Rhodes, is also set to appear on the show. On Monday, uh, world champion Seth Rollins pleaded his case to Rhodes about why he should face him at WrestleMania. Also on the show, the Women's Royal Rumble winner, Bailey, has stated she'll announce who she'll be facing at Mania. It's either going to be the Women's World Champion, Rhea Ripley, or her stablemate and WWE Women's Champion, EO Sky saying that right there, I just realized how dumb it is that we, why do we not have a, a women's world champion and a women's universal champion? Why is it the women's world t- champion in the WWE women's champion? It seems too bulky. Am I the only I one? I never once thought about it. I just thought about it. I just thought about it and I don't like it. I don't like it. Well, I also don't re- like Logan Paul. Do you like Logan Paul? Logan Paul's job is to make you not like him. Yeah, and he does a damn good job of it, and he's really good in the ring with a, a very little experience. He'll be on the show talking about his disqualification win over Kevin Owens at the Rumble. PW Insider is reporting that Tiffany Stratton is appearing at the show tonight, and it's also been rumored that Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams will also be there. As of this morning... No matches announced for the show, but there are two matches, all with Raw talent actually being advertised uh, locally for the for the fans that are going to the show. I guess dark matches before and after. Sami Zayn against Drew McIntyre in a three-way for the women's world title between Rhea Ripley, Nia Jax, and Shayna Baszler. Call your friends. Words are going to be said in this next segment. Filthy Tom Lawler and I welcome on MLW's Matthew Justice, Second Gear Crew, coming on when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi here with you. And yes, chaos has been orchestrated. Welcoming to the show right now from the Second Gear Crew. You've seen him in every major promotion around. And tomorrow in Philadelphia at the 2300 Arena, yes, Saturday, February 3rd, this man will be facing off against our own filthy Tom Lawler. Ladies and gentlemen, Matthew Justice. Matthew, how are you? I'm great. How are you guys doing? <laughs> I'm not even going to answer man. that. I'm not even going to answer that question, Matt. <laughs> Whatever you've got to say, you, you know, whatever you've Tom, got to say, yeah. I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be good, doing good <laughs> hey. tomorrow when I'm standing with my foot on top of your chest. But you go ahead and say whatever you want right now, buddy. Get on that Nokia 3200 <laughs> you're t- that you're man. calling from and let us know. You're- 
sounds like you're on one of those slider phones, bro. Um, you're also talking like you're on a UFC uh, Ultimate Fighter face to face, but behind a you know a, a screen, brother. And all, I'm glad that they reminded me I'm not allowed to swear because I had a filthy tirade for you, man. <sighs> I'm sure you did. I'm, that's a good. That's a good segue. That's a good outro for you to use the very few brain cells you have left to come up with a reason not to oh, talk man, anymore. Oh man, my brain. Talk save, save, <laughs> yeah, save those brain cells for tomorrow, buddy. We face off before. All right. Man. This uh, isn't gonna be not the first this, time. Uh, is this? Uh, is this? Is MSL like? Is he? Um typing this out for you on the teleprompter is he in studio with you or what's the deal man i know you're on the hook for the wts Listen, msl's so, uh, at you home you seem to be a puppet you only see <laughs> msl's at home he's at home he's, with... yeah he's watching tape on yeah. his vhs player yeah. of the second gear crew and he's gonna have a plan i mean i have been wrestling tomorrow i have been wrestling long enough that i i i did appear on vhs is that's how long my career has been so i mean uh that's really not a slight i think that's well, a, like a legacy of violence that i have matt since you're on the air right now why don't you let most of our listeners out there know about your career know who you are because i'm sure that they have no idea oh come on <laughs> oh man well, Tom, I will I will just I will fill them in a little bit. I've been wrestling for eighteen years. I'm a long time journeyman. I've been just about everywhere. Um I uh I, like I said, I think I have a legacy of violence that I've made for myself, especially over the last maybe six or seven years when I really just threw caution to the wind and didn't care at all anymore about what anyone thinks. And that is what I'll take to my grave. Um, yeah, and it's not really something that I need to look to the past because I'm still moving forward. I don't really care about what I've done. I already did it. I'm not saying that that's, you know, I'm not diminishing any of those things, but I just, I have more to do, uh, including tomorrow, Saturday at the 2300, formerly ECW arena, the main ingredient to my style and attitude of life. And, uh, you know, the only thing you can do, man, is buy the ticket and take the ride. So, Speaking of taking the ride, has there ever been a ride that you've taken that you've regretted? Because one thing that I know you love to do is to throw around one of Tom's failed tag team partners, Joshua Bishop, and drop him off of high things. <laughs> but has there ever been a high thing that you have actually done a, a double take and said, even I can't do this? No, not at all. As far as jumping off of ledges or balconies or uh, any type of extreme thing, I would say I maybe did a double take that I signed a contract with WWE when I was younger. That's probably about the only thing I double take on, honestly. But, you know, you live and learn on some things. Did you stop drinking Bush beer after your experience as Matthew Bush in, in WWE? I mean, was that enough to like make you never Hold drink on. Bush again and go to Wait, just natural life? That is what your gimmick was? You gotta be kidding me! <laughs> no, no, no. Ma that Matthew Bush was just a one-time jobber name that they gave me on a oh, SmackDown before oh, I, I got it. signed. I that was just shame. that was some placid. <laughs> Are you, uh, you seem more of like a merging kind of guy. Are we, am I even allowed to say that on there? I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you just did, so well, there, there's did. that, no, but. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like, you know, obviously, you know, you, you and the second gear crew are, you know, really over the last couple of years, those GCW shows, I think, you know, certainly helped hype up and, and shine a lot of spotlight, spotlight on all of you guys, whether it be. Manders, Mance, Effie, Ali, yourself. I mean, talk a little bit, I guess, about that second gear crew because, you know, you guys really are the bar scene from Star Wars come to life, coming to your town and wrecking shop. You know, what, what is it like riding with that crew? And, and just how did even those that whole deal get together? Absolutely. I think our whole M.O., really and unsaid too unspoken at first was to just raise the bar take it to a new level of violence but we all started out 
fighting each other in all of the promotions on our come up really pre COVID. We were all like the the big names, almost like the indie territories I'd say. We were all champions in in other places, AAW, AIW, all of the you know, we, we appeared frequently and beyond, all the who you know, the big name promotions no. and we yeah. all loved fighting each other. Yeah. Not not to not to bust in. Tom. But wasn't there a godfather? Tom. Wasn't there a godfather of the SGC who's no longer with you guys? Eddie Kingston. I mean, Eddie. Uh, Eddie was, was he's an OG member of the Second Gear Crew, of course. And and our manager was it was Bill Alfonso. Let's be honest, he's the one that orchestrated and brought me, Mance, and Eddie together. Really. That, that was it. <laughs> Keep going. Hey, thanks, Will. <laughs> but but we. Uh, <laughs> The, the foundation of the second gear crew was definitely formed standing across the ring from each other, realizing that we all kind of brought the same, same energy. We were willing to really like just throw caution to the wind. We have no regard for our, for our body, whatever we have to do in the midst of a fight. And that's, that's what, you know, made us realize that we, we should all stand together and be even stronger than we were individually. And then, yeah, like you said, I mean, some of the wars we had in GCW over the years, I was actually just thinking, Mike, when you messaged me about, you know, our famous tag with the Briscoes when they first came in. And then, of course, the infamous uh, high incident match um, with them as well. Like those are those are moments of my life that I'll never forget, regardless of what what else happens to me down the line. The, and and those are things that people still always bring up. And and I mean those are staples of what the Second Gear crew is. It's really not just like it was never meant to be an on screen thing. Honestly, it was just a bunch of guys that rolled with each other on the road, making towns. Another highway, another town, as Manners would say. And that's really what it was. And uh, I love it. It's a lifestyle. And only a select few can do it. And that's why Tom's in the WTF, obviously, because he wants to be a sellout. And, <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that. We all have, we, we, we all have qualities of, of being great sports entertainers, but we just are never going to buy into that. At least I know I'm not. Maybe my, my, my friends might want to do that a little bit, but I will always go against the grain of that corporate wrestling structure that Tom seems to be backing now with WTF and MLW. So, uh, you yeah, know. It's such a bad thing to get a paycheck at the end of the day. It's such a bad thing to have to, you know, listen to somebody else, listen to a leader a little bit. When you want a job, if you've Sometimes, noticed anything about the rest, if you, if, Tom, if you notice anything about this res, the wrestling business over the years, a lot of these people who are the leaders are not leading people properly. They're leading people. What do you mean? To, to doom. Wait, <laughs> I, look I mean, up and down. Just, uh, just, look up and down. Just open up the show. <laughs> He was just telling me before the show how much he admires Jeff Jarrett. That's what he was saying before the show. Well, actually, Jeff Jarrett is actually. Just, I can't say anything negative about Jeff Jarrett because that man still puts in the work behind the scenes as a as a as a management position, running a company. I think he actually puts in the work. I mean, the guy looks great. He's still on TV going. Do you think Tom Wall is going to be wrestling at age fifty five? It doesn't sound sound like he even likes wrestling now. He wants to he wants to be one of those guys that sits backstage at the big arena but isn't booked. But just because his paycheck is coming in, he's happy. I mean, I want to work for my money, man. I want to earn it. Like that's how it goes. I I want to be in the trenches. I always want to be on the front lines. I I don't want to be like oh just Why? content to be there. <laughs> I that's just I was born with it, man. That, I was born that, this way. I'm dropping a Lady Gaga quote live on terrestrial radio. That's pretty off brand for me. <laughs> yeah, you seem more like a uh, Lizzo guy. <laughs> I mean, hey, if, if, if it hits, it hits, right, dude. Well, you're going to be doing some hitting, and you already did some hitting, you know, during the tag match you guys had last month, which has led to this battle between you two. Talk a little bit about that match and just MLW, how they've treated you here as World Tag Team Champions, you and Manders. 
that that tight team match is all gas, no breaks. And there was other variables. Your man, baby Josh Bishop, and and my workhorse buddy Manders. But there's nothing standing between you now except for air and uh, MSL. If you can really count on him or who, whatever other cronies you guys bring to the ring because there always seems to be that's one thing since I've been in MLW everyone that we have had an issue with it seems to have an unlimited amount of goons that just appear at any random time but I'm up for the fight you know and I, I, I do love don't be mad because you have a limited <laughs> amount of goons that's not our I mean I keep my circle I keep my circle small I don't really like to open myself up to I've been I've been in this business too long. I've I've learned too many lessons about opening yourself up to everyone because you can't trust anybody. I what DTA, Stone Cold has been telling us all along since I was a little kid, DTA, don't trust anybody. And the few guys that I've that I've let in, those are my guys and they'll always be my guys. Regardless of if we're fighting as a team or if we're off doing our own individual thing, I know when push comes to shove, I know when the chips are in the middle, I can always count on those guys to have my back. The rest of you, all the goons, all the fuck, uh, all the uh, faceless people, they're nothing, you know? But, yeah. <laughs> Damn right. Ooh. So, <laughs> whose side are you on, Mike? You, you were, you were talking real own. nice before he got on there. Now you're giving him a, a damn right after he goes on the on the air and buries me. You can't. I thought See, I almost slipped right. up. Come on, he's man. Right. You can't trust anybody. What do you do? I no wait. I am a. I I'm, am a. I'm, I already. I'm, I'm in the role as a unbiased yeah, he, journalist here. That's what I am. He's like the guy. Run, he's like the. He's like the guy that's tasked with uh, running the presidential debate. He's just like doomed from the start, man. He just. He, he, he's just trying to do his job. Well, well, it really is doomed from the start. I mean, I. I when they when they told me I had to do an interview with with Brian Alvarez and Wrestling Observer, I'm like, oh, I'm, I already knew I was walking into enemy territory. I was ready. I I was coming in guns blazing. As far as I'm concerned, man, I can't I can't That's Mike I can't let you be more than not. Mo- I know, I know, Brian I know. Alvarez I'm just saying though. I yeah. hey, honestly, Filthy, I would be they, a better partner when, to you than than Brian Alvarez has been over uh, the the past couple of times out. Yeah, guys, but. Hey, Matthew. He's probably too afraid to be on this show. <laughs> you know, I think he's off right now hiding behind uh, both dresses on his little kids. But as I insult him, I hear the music. We must go to break. Matthew, sit back here, uh, reload the gun, because we'll be back. Wrestling Observer Live. <laughs> Mike Sempervivi, filthy Tom Lawler here with you. We only have about two minutes left in this segment. Um, filthy sent me a text, Matthew, that he said two minutes is all you really ever need for anything uh, do you have any response to that i think he must be looking into a mirror man he's just reflecting and i think that's uh you know an internal issue that he needs to look into himself i think you're right matt i think you're right i think at 2300 to arena tomorrow you're right i think it's time that justice gets served <laughs> Tom, I think tomorrow I'm going to pick you apart piece by piece by piece. I will literally dismantle you until there's nothing left of your broken, frail body as it is, man. Well, it's clear you followed my career, so... <laughs> And that is coming up tomorrow at the, the twenty three hundred arena. And uh, so, is this this is going to be TV tapings? Am I correct, gentlemen? Yeah, it's a main event yeah, anywhere this across is, uh, the world. For, it is, and you know, this is a first time ever singles match. I don't know if you realize that, Tom. You're talking as if you're you've scouted me. I know we have fought other places. In tag matches, we've also fought in four corners, maybe triple threats. You've never really faced the full burden that is an unleashed Matthew Justice. And earlier, you you cut me off. 
that's the thing. MLW is actually allowed. I hate to do it. We've got to cut you off. Saturday, February 3rd. Catch him. Have you, Justin? Filthy Tom Lawler. MLW. We'll talk to you again after a while.